Cheers guys, I'm the Tech Prepper, hope you're all doing well. We're gonna continue our series on no random contacts. And for today, I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. We're gonna go ahead and conflate a couple of topics I've covered on the channel. We're gonna incorporate some of the um, information in the last video, which had to do with the medical evacuation while my hiking party and myself were on Mount Whitney in Lone Pine, California. But we're also gonna to touch on some of the digital aspects I've shown on the channel. And our mission objective today is to establish a known quantity. It will be my group of emergency communication operators. I train with them at least once a month on Tuesday evenings from about 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And that's roughly 10 minutes from now. So that, that will be the known quantity. We have a schedule. And in terms of information I want to traffic, I'm going to try to send in a nine line medevac uh, format basically the details of the evacuation that I was involved in last week on Summit. Now, this is gonna be somewhat fictitious and not terribly practical because I am not prior service, and this group also uh, is not active military. But the purpose of this video is to demonstrate that we can send and traffic a large set of information using a radio and a computer for the purpose of having very little ambiguity in the message that's being sent across. And I think that the US military's SOP for uh, transmitting those eight or nine elements would be a good test. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, jump into our normal exercise. I'll share with you guys a bit of it, and we'll talk about everything and anything related to what we're doing tonight. It's uh, 1800 hours, 6 p.m. local time. I'm gonna go ahead and transmit and see if anybody comes back to me. We'll talk about everything you're seeing on the screen shortly. This is gonna be a fun test. We'll see what happens. No one is expecting this payload. Hey there, Paul. I did not jump the gun. I waited till uh, 1800 to send my first piece of traffic. How are you this evening? Well, I'm doing well, Gaston. Good to hear you again. And uh, I do see your first piece of traffic. I'm uh, opening it here now, and it looks like I received, the, uh, I received your message uh, as written. Uh, looks like it's formatted correctly. All right, before we jump into our after action report, I have to give a huge shout out to Contingency Medical for sponsoring this episode of The Tech Prepper so there won't be any annoying YouTube ads. I've been using their medical products for a couple months and I love the peace of mind that they provide. They offer a variety of antibiotics and medicines that are prescribed to you by a doctor, filled by a pharmacist, shipped to your door, and they even include a nice field manual. Heck, you can even get telemed services if you're unclear on how to use those medications. Now, they're perfect for travel, backpacking, and general preparedness. They even offer to save you guys a few bucks with the coupon code that's down in the description. Again, big shout out to Contingency Medical. Let's get back to the show. All right, guys, let's go ahead and talk about the who, what, where, why, and how of that exercise. So first of all, yes, I was successful in establishing uh, a contact with some known quantities. These are the members in my emergency communications group. We meet once a month on Tuesday evenings from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, it's either done on a repeater system, a standalone repeater, or simplex. This all works perfectly fine. There's no internet involved here whatsoever. Now, the entire point of this video, and the only thing I would like you to walk away from, is thinking about when you would want to use voice, versus using something like a digital data mode like we did here. So I want to show you something on my screen real quick here. We're going to fire up the screen recording and we're going to take a look at the message that one of the messages I trafficked during that exercise. Um, while I was on peak uh, last week in Lone Pound, California with my family, we had to have a medical evacuation. I had a viewer comment to the effect of, are you familiar with the nine line medevac request? I said no. Now this is a format that's typically used uh, by the military for the purposes of extraction or extracting casualties. But I thought it would be a good demonstration of uh, a scenario where you have a lot of data that needs to be communicated from one party to one or more parties and the communication has to be received and fully acknowledged with 100% accuracy. 
accuracy because we're dealing with latitude and longitudes of the location. We're dealing with casualties that uh, may have uh, injuries that are minor to very severe. There may be requests for different types of equipment. So I don't want to get into the nine line medevac itself. I'm not an expert there, but what I do want to make the point is there's a lot of information that needs to be trafficked. So for example, let's go ahead and say that I want to traffic part of this uh, to another party. Uh, I'm not going to read everything. I'll read a, a couple lines here. So I'll key up, be advised. This is a test, not an emergency. Figures three, six, decimal, five, six, three, seven, four, one, seven, nine, zero, five, three, five, two, four, comma. And on and on we can go. Now, uh, I probably could have shortened the latitude and longitude a bit here, uh, so I'm not sending as much data over voice, but the point is the receiving station needs to acknowledge all of these eight or nine points, relay them back for confirmation. If anything has been missed, re-clarification. So transmitting this payload could take 10 minutes. Um, I really don't know. But what I want to show you is how quickly we can send this information once and only once in most cases and how quickly we can do it. And that is really the takeaway. So uh, I have the same setup that uh, I ran during that exercise and we're gonna go ahead and uh, send this transmission off and see how long it takes. All right, so we're about eight seconds transmission. So at this point now, the uh, five other parties, let's go ahead and turn this off. At this point, the uh, five other parties or four other parties in my group uh, were able to fully copy and acknowledge full receipt. So they had uh, my location, they had the reporting party, which was myself, the frequency that I was monitoring so they can get a hold of me, how many casualties, what severity, the nature of the environment, and we are done. So I don't want to bog you down with all the specifics of what we've done here. We'll touch on it slightly because I've done videos on this in the past. Point is, take a look at embracing digital data modes as part of your communications plan and the training you do with your group. We have found it very valuable for the purposes of sending lots of data very quickly and efficiently without any fills or repeats. All right, so let's talk about how this was done. I actually have a number of videos that describe how this is done in detail. I'll put a link to my NBMS uh, videos down in the description, uh, but at a high level, it stands for Narrow Bandwidth Emergency Messaging Software. And I used two pieces of software from that suite in this demonstration. The first was FL Digi, and the other one was FL Message. Now, in terms of interfacing, this with the radio, I'm actually using the uh, Digi Rig with a USB interface into my computer. Now, I've also shown how you can do this without any hardware between your computer and a radio use a, using acoustic coupling. So there's about a half dozen videos that I would recommend you guys watch uh, in terms of being able to ramp yourself up on what you're, we're doing here. Now, we also used my uh, TTP man pack. I am running the Yaesu FT8900. I absolutely love this rig for VHF, UHF work because it is a dual VFO rig. So I'm able to transmit digitally and receive digitally on one side of the radio. And uh, I can also do voice uh, on top of that as well, but I could also monitor another frequency uh, for voice, for example, on the other side. So not a whole lot in terms of uh, equipment. Well, I guess there's a whole lot. There's a radio, a digital interface, a computer, and some software. But what you get with that is the ability to be a very efficient communicator. And honestly, that's the whole point of radio. If you're not gonna be trafficking something that's worth receiving, what's the point? A uh, couple of other things, let's talk about some use cases, and I believe there are three. So my group uh, really is focused on two. The first one is public service. They want to embrace this technology for the purpose of passing admin traffic when we go out and support wilderness endurance races, for example. It's great for uh, sending lists of information like runners that have dropped out of the race, but time, male, female, bib number, etc. Again, that would be a pain in the ass to do it with a 
radio over voice. The other one is if our uh, group gets activated for an emergency, let's say that uh, there's significant flooding in Maricopa County, this is a great way of trafficking information. Uh, for example, who's coming into a shelter, maybe at the local high school, a list of equipment requirement, and again, it cuts down a lot on the back and forth that normally would be experienced with voice. Personally, number three, this is my SHTF comms plan. I have three identical rigs like this, three CF20 tough books, three VHF UHF radios, and three digi rigs. And the plan is to deploy one at the front of the street, one in my house, one in the rear, and be able to traffic data. Now, I've talked about this sort of in an episode not too long ago. In the absence of rule of law, you better believe the tech prepper is going to encrypt the payload and it will absolutely work over this channel. Doing encryption on voice is a lot more complicated. In fact, you're gonna need a fancy radio like this Motorola XTS 5000 with a crypto board, with a key loader and all kinds of stuff. I'm doing that too, uh, or I'm working on that too. But the bottom line is here, if you're prepper focused and wanna have a off-grid solution to traffic data, this is the solution. I'm not advocating that anybody break the law, but I am a realist and believe that encryption uh, could be valuable in a scenario where you need to send sensitive information uh, if there's no civil service or civil servants to help protect you. All right, guys, I don't wanna keep this video uh, going on and on. It's probably close to 20 minutes already. But with that said, I wanna thank all of the supporters on Buy Me A Coffee. I'm almost uh, ready to uh, start taking orders on the bags. Uh, I, I owe you guys an update, but um, yeah, be strong, be safe, and be prepared.